Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Neil Armstrong's lunar spacesuit is deteriorating. Horacio Lawrence wins the Acro World Tour 2018. And historic Convair 880 to be acquired by the Telemuc Air Museum. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's August 31st, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The spacesuit that Neil Armstrong wore on the historic Apollo 11 moon mission is falling apart. And while his custodians at the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum are trying to preserve it, the suit is showing his age. The main culprit is a layer of neoprene embedded in the fabric of the suit. Neoprene is a material that is used to make wetsuits, and over time it hardens and becomes brittle. The Smithsonian took the suit off display 12 years ago in an effort to preserve the historic artifact. They have managed to slow down the aging process, but not stop it. There are 21 layers of fabric, including nylon and Teflon, that make up the suit. After the break, Lake Aircraft FAA type certificate and assets offered for sale. The dream is real. A truly affordable personal jet aircraft. The Subsonics personal jet kit is priced at only $42,000. Kit plus engine is still under $100K. Add instruments, upholstery, and paint, and you're flying. It's time to put your money where your bucket list is. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, Airborne Man, the AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news by at aero-news.net. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. After over 40 years of ownership, Revo Incorporated is again offering for sale the assets of Lake Aircraft, the only FAA certified single engine amphibious airplane produced in the world. The offerings include all of the intellectual property and equipment needed to manufacture the Lake Renegade, Sea Fury, and Sea Wolf airplanes. Prior attempts to sell the company have failed to find an acceptable buyer. The potential for an undetected failure of flap cables due to corrosion on Textron Aviation Beach Jet Models 400, 400A, 400T, and MU-310 airplanes has led the FAA to issue an SAIB for the airplanes. The FAA has received multiple reports through the Service Difficulty Reporting System of severe corrosion on the flap cables, to the extent that cable separation has occurred in the flap well area where the cables connect to the swage fittings on Textron BeachJet models 400, 400A, 400T, and MU-310 airplanes. Martha King, co-chair and co-owner of King Schools, has been appointed to Civil Air Patrol's Board of Governors. King succeeds retired U.S. Air Force Major General Teresa Peterson, whose second three-year on the Board of Governors expires in November. The Civil Air Patrol has a long and storied history and represents the biggest and most committed group of volunteers in aviation, King said. It's an honor to be associated with this wonderful group of contributors. Technicians have completed construction on the spacecraft capsule structure that will return astronauts to the moon and have shipped their capsule to Florida for final assembly into a full spacecraft. The capsule structure or pressure vessel for NASA's Orion Exploration Mission 2 spacecraft was welded together over the last seven months by Lockheed Martin technicians and engineers at the NASA Michoud Assembly Facility near New Orleans. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Despite fierce competition from his fellow paragliding aerobatic competitors, Spain's Horacio Lorenz, 35, 
impressed the judges with spectacular maneuvers and gained the top spot on the podium of the Acro World Tour Finals. The final battle between Horacio Lorenz and Rafael Garbana proved to be extremely tight. Despite a less precise landing, Lorenz's better technique and flight choreography allowed him to get the better of Garbana and win the competition. It is the sixth time that Lorenz leads the world's rankings in paragliding aerobatics. He said after his victorious final flight, "I am incredibly happy with the result of the competition. The level is incredibly high, but I have been training super hard. I didn't expect to be the winner, to be honest." But I have been building each victory slowly, and I have been lucky as well, probably. At the end, I am the winner of the competition and the winner of the 2018 World Rankings. I would like to say thanks to my friends and my family for supporting me so well, and to my sponsor Red Bull that helped me to be here. Thank you so much. Nine nations from Europe and South America were represented by the 14 pilots who qualified for the finals. With two wild cards bringing the total to 16. After these messages, historic Convair 880 to be acquired by the Tillamook Air Museum. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research, and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We. Our Hartzell propeller. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high-performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordebattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Welcome back. The Telemark Air Museum, in cooperation with Doug Scroggins of Scroggins Aviation of Las Vegas, Nevada, is adding to its growing collection of historic aircraft and aviation exhibits. The forward fuselage of a 1960 Transworld Airlines Convair 880 jetliner, one of the finest, most comfortable commercial jet aircraft ever produced. After sitting in the Mojave Desert for the past 38 years, this relic from a bygone era. Will now be the only Convair 880 on display anywhere on the West Coast. Built in San Diego in 1960 and delivered to Northeast Airlines, this particular Convair 880 set two speed records during its lifetime. One in 1960 from San Diego, California to Boston, Massachusetts, in four hours and 17 minutes, and another in 1962 from New York's LaGuardia Airport to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. In one hour and forty-three minutes, a record that still stands to this day. The aircraft was then sold to the Transworld Airlines in August 1963 and flown until June of 1974, when the airplane was officially retired from service and moved to the Mojave, California airport in September 1980, where the aircraft was sold and then resold until Warner Brothers Pictures purchased the aircraft in 1990. Warner Brothers would go on to utilize the airplane in one of its films, *The Rookie*, starring Clint Eastwood and Charlie Sheen. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, alternating with Airborne Unmanned on Tuesday and the AMA Drone Report each Thursday. Additional breaking news bulletins may be posted for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24/7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week.